Hello and welcome to this third and final part in the mini-series on using Polka and PESC, brought to you by Opal Systems. And this time we're looking at the selection of reference material. And you may remember if you watched the previous videos that we discussed the model that we use when we're making speech quality or voice quality measurements. We have a reference uh, signal, reference clean speech signal, which we inject into the network that we're testing. And then we have the corresponding degraded signal, which we capture at the far end of the phone call or the network that's under test. Now, there are technical requirements regarding what kind of reference material we can use. And in fact, for both PESC and Polka, there are technical guides published by the ITU, and this is where you can find them. The Opal Multi-DSLA test system comes supplied with two types of speech material. One is called the Artificial Speech Test Stimulus, or ASTS. These are very suitable for use with PESC, but unfortunately cannot be used with Polka for a variety of reasons. Second type of material is from the ITU recommendation P501, which publishes reference speech material in a number of languages, which has been designed specifically for the purposes of objective voice quality testing. Technical requirements I mentioned just now for Polka include limits for the amount of background noise, conditions for the amount of reverberation in the room where the recording took place, the structure of the test material, that is, where the speech is and where the silences are, and how much there is of both of those. Fortunately, the multi-DSLA file processor feature contains a very clever routine which analyzes any speech material that we might wish to use with the system and tells us categorically whether it is suitable for Polka or not. That is whether or not it complies with Polka's conformance requirements. In this example, we see that the speech sample has failed one out of the 16 tests. So it's all looking a little bit complicated, isn't it, with various things that we need to take into account. And if we don't get it right, we are going to put at risk the accuracy reliability of our PESC and Polka results. But look, don't worry too much because the multi-DSLA test system makes all of this very simple. All we have to do is follow the very simple process, which I'm going to show you next. Now we're looking at the multi-DSLA user interface. And I'm going to show you just how easy it is to select the appropriate material here. Let's start in the P501 folder, and then we'll simply select English, because that's the only choice that's available at the moment. And finally, we'll select between cellular, which means narrowband cellular, and next gen, which means HD voice or above, or PSTN, which is the traditional public switch telephone network, also narrowband. Let's choose next gen. Now the drop down box shows us two things it shows us recently used tests and what we're now interested in the contents of the current folder. Let's choose the quick quality check. You can see that the quick quality check now opens up in the task list editor window, the same name. And as we expand the task list, which defines the test, we can see in here the female one wave file is mentioned as the source or the reference material. And when we look at the folder it's in, it's from the P501 English 48K super wideband folder. And now it's just a little beyond the scope of this article, but here are the corresponding node configuration settings that we would normally wish or need to use with each of those three types of test. You may remember the cellular, next gen and PSTN selection. So thank you for watching and listening. And just to mention that next time we'll be talking about something quite different. 
how to set up audio streaming integrity and this is to check the efficiency of streaming of music over Bluetooth and Wi-Fi links.